about the perfected love. This is part two of that. So the other day, I was, um, actually yesterday, I went to, to, to do a funeral. And I did a funeral or a home gumming, a home gumming, <laughs> a home going of a young lady who had originally been one of, the, one of the first members of faith culture. I had lost contact with them for years upon years, but they got back in contact with me and asked me if I would come out and do it. And so, of course, you know, because we love people. Uh, and and uh, as I was driving to the committal, to place the body in the grave and to do the ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I'm driving through the graveyard and I see tons of tombstones of rich people, middle class people. And I looked at the money that was in those tombstones and just, it was just an awareness. I do funerals, I've done many funerals, I've done, done many weddings and all that kind of stuff because a preacher's job is to hatch, match, and dispatch. We, we, bring, we bring babies into the world, we marry people, and then we send people on out of here. So I've done many of those before, but but this time it was different. I looked at all those tombstones and it occurred, it just opened up to me like that, that almost, mostly nothing that those people have done matters now. Like, I mean, these people have been dead. Some of them have been dead for two and three hundred years. All that they have done, most of them, it, 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 it does not matter now. The two currencies that do matter, number one, is the legacy that they left for their children if their children didn't blow it, that's still in the earth. And then the, the other thing that matters the most is that if they left a legacy of love, that legacy of love still lives in heaven and earth at the same time. Love is the one currency that still exists uh, between the two different worlds. And if you don't have it, you're missing something big. Love is a quintessential emotion uh, that exists not only in this world but in the world to come. And people will do anything to get it. People will do anything to keep it, even killing themselves. A person will take their own life if they feel that no one loves them and write a letter at the end of it and say, maybe now someone will love me. If a person experiences love from a person that they, uh, that they really wanted love from and that person wants to leave them, that same person will try to take their life. Because I cannot exist in this earth knowing that somebody else is getting the love that I'm supposed to get. So if I can't have you, what? Nobody can have it. People will do anything for love. People, watch this, will change their genders for love. Just to be loved, a person will change their gender. People take and, and jock for positions. Uh, why? Because if they get a position, people will see them and honor them and admire them. And that admiration to them feels like love. People want to be famous for love. Because they get on the crowd, on the stage, and everybody's applauding them. And, oh, oh, I love you, I love you. But when the love stops, then they're bankrupt. People will do anything f for love. But here's the deal. When you get a revelation of the perfected love of God, it's so crazy that you will never, ever need. See, see when you do anything for love, that means that you're manipulating for love. But when you get a perfected uh, a revelation of the perfected love, you'll never need anybody to love you or applaud you again. You'll want them to, but you won't need them to. See, now when you get a, a, a revelation of the perfected love, now you become the gift. So when I show up in your life, I am your gift. And this is the reason why I go where I'm celebrated, not where I'm tolerated, because I'm a gift. Write down in your comments, I am a gift, I am a gift, I am a gift. Say that to the person next to you, I am a gift. When you get a revelation of the perfected, now this is the meat of everything right here. When you really get a revelation of the perfected love of God, you will understand God's intention for you is only good. When you understand that God's intentions for you are only good, you face problems completely different. You see that? When you understand that every, God, everything that happens to you, even your tests, they happen to you out of a place of love. And if it happened to you out of a place of love, I'm not going to manipulate to get out of it. I'm not going to try to bring somebody down um, because they look better than me and they're the new me. Because I understand that God's intentions for me are good because of how much he loves me. So the age I am right now, the race I am right now, the size of my church right now is what God wants for me because his intentions are always good. When a person does not really understand the perfected love of God, they're always trying to hurt someone else or do something to someone else uh, because they don't really believe that what God has for them is good. But tell the person next to you, what God has for you is good right now. 
When you have a revelation on the perfected love, you react different to trials. Trials are coming, no doubt about that. But when you have a revelation of it, you just react completely different. I want you to go to Romans 5 with me. Romans chapter 5. It says this. uh, Romans 5 and verse 3. New Living Translation says this. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We can rejoice when we run into problems and, and trials. So that means that the perfected love will have you like this. Run into a child like, oh, I'm happy. Like, really happy because your rent is not paid. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Happy because someone left your life. When you have the perfected love, you know that when people leave your life, they were supposed to because you never really had them at all. But if you don't have the perfected love, when someone leaves your life, you will manipulate to get them back. There's people that left my life that I tried to get back, and when I got them back, I didn't want them anymore. And I prayed for God to get them out, and he says, nope, you did it, so you keep it. But if I would have have laid hold to the perfected love, I would have figured it out that my intentions for you, Gerald, are only good. So that person that left your life was supposed to leave your life because that person was holding you down and I was trying to raise you up. But you needed something that you didn't get as a child. Maybe the love of a brother. Because I never had a brother. Even me not having a brother is God's perfected love. Because I'm a better brother than other people now. Me not having a father... It's God's, when you understand the perfected love, you react to trials differently. I didn't have a dad in my life. No one to show me how big my hands are going to be. No things, but now I'm a spiritual father. If I'd had a father in my life, I wouldn't be as passionate about raising other young men up. When you have an understanding of the perfected love, you face trials completely different. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us to develop endurance. And then endurance develops what? Strength. And then strength, uh, a character. Uh, 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 Endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our, our confidence, our hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. I want to submit this to you. If you have a revelation of the perfected love, When you go into trials, it builds your character. It gives you endurance. And you will never be disappointed in the end. Never. Unless you don't have a revelation of the the perfected love. Because when you go to a trial and you don't have the perfected love, you're going to manipulate to get out of it and then end up disappointed every time. But when you stay in it the way that God has you in it, you'll you'll never be disappointed. It says, and this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know, oh my God. Are y'all listening? to? Okay. I I said that when you have a revelation of the perfected love of God, you react to trials differently, correct? And this hope will not lead us to disappointment. Why? For we know how dearly God loves us. The disappointment comes at your lack of revelation of how dearly God loves you. If you're disappointed right now, it's a lack of revelation. Of how dearly the Lord loves you. I'm getting ready to get excited now. Uh, Because he has, now this is, to me, this right here, I've I've been swimming in this and just practicing this ever since I found out about it. It says, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. The love of God comes to you through the Holy Ghost. That's why he feels so good. When you, when, you, when you get in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit touches you, the reason why it feels good is because it is the love of God. The Holy Spirit is the love of God. I don't under, people don't understand that. When, you, when you're with your hands lifted up and you say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, Yahweh, and then something comes upon you, that good feeling that comes upon you is his love. The King James, says, the King James language says the Holy Ghost is shed abroad in our hearts. So I've been walking around, oh my, right now, every five seconds I'm just feeling something hit me. And it's the Lord said, another wave of love, another touch of love. Every time I speak in tongues, something's touching me. It's right now, it's on my left ear right now, another touch of love. Uh, Do you know what the Lord is telling me right now? I love what I'm hearing from you. Uh, Another touch of love. Lift your hands right now and say, God, give me a love encounter. She, oh. 
Oh, I can hardly talk because the love of God is flowing. It's helping me to react to my trials completely different. It's helping me to react to the poverty that that I was in completely different because I know now I don't have the big head because the Lord let me get low. When you understand the perfected love of God, anxiety goes because anxiety is a reaction to you not really believing that God has his be- your best interest at heart. Woo, someone say love of God. Love Overflow. God. Hey, permeate. Oh, my soul. Woo, those who are here right now, they can feel the love flowing in a, in a different way. Get in receive mode because we're going to have a love encounter today. Uh, it says this, that the Holy Ghost um, is shed abroad, uh, the, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by, by the Holy Ghost. Now, now, when you react to your trials, you step into fear. And fear is pregnant with something. Fear never comes alone. Fear is always carrying a baby. The Bible says fear has torment. But perfect love casts out fear. So fear is walking around trying to get you scared because fear is scared. Fear is a wimp. It's scared. It's scary. It's not really the fear. It's what the fear is carrying. Fear carries torment. Torment is a position in hell. The Bible says that the man that was going to hell was delivered to the tormentors. So fear is a vacuum and fear is an incubator uh, for torment. And, it, and he wants to get you in a position where he's t- talking to you over and over and over and over again. But, but the Holy Ghost is pregnant too. Fear is pregnant with torment, but the Bible just shows you that the Holy Ghost is pregnant with the love of God. <laughs> hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Every time you tap into the realm of the Holy Ghost, every time you tap into the realm of the unseen, every time you tap into the realm of the Messiah, every time you tap into the realm of the lily of the valley, every time you tap into the realm of the John 15 Holy Ghost, the love of God comes in and eradicates all fear. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm in a love revolution, you guys. Fear, now, now there is a such thing as healthy fear. We're not, we're not going to go run out on 79 and say, kick me, I don't have any fear. Come rob me, I don't have any fear. No, it's talking about fear of something happening bad to you uh, as a result of God not caring for you. I have no, I, right now at this point in my life, I'm 23 years old, I have no fear. I'm not scared. I'm not afraid of anything. If, if, if I never get to the space that I dreamed about, it's okay. Because it's his best intentions for me. If I can't sing like Luther Vandross or Mario or Trey Songs or Justin Bieber, it's okay. okay. I can sing like me. And that's what he wanted for me. Because there's an anointing in what I say. I am God's best intention for himself. Tell the person next to you, I am God's best intention for himself out of my life. You are the best that God has to offer through you. That's it. And once you get a revelation, people who know who they are. It's something about a person who knows who they are. I was talking to a young lady and she was saying how, you know, there was a man that came into her life who was a musician. And he spent a lot of money trying to get in this, on this stage and get around this person and get around this person. I think the younger people call it clout chasing or clout chasing. Get around this person and get around this person and get around this person. And, and, and they spent money and they traveled and they were just like l- looking for it. Uh, but the young lady wasn't even looking for it and it came to her because she knows who she is. When you know who you are, what you're supposed to be will come to you. The moment you know, it's coming. I promise you, you're not waiting on the Lord. The Lord is waiting on you to know that you are loved by him. Lift your hands and say, I'm loved by God. I'm loved by God. Man, when you love the Lord, I said this last week, when you love the Lord and you know that the Lord loves you, um, your, your faith will be on steroids. Everything takes faith. Everything. It takes faith to be saved, right? 
Because 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 if you if you got to you got to confess with your heart, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Romans chapter eight. Um, the Bible says, John three sixteen. whoever believes in him shall be saved. The Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 6 or Hebrews uh, 12, it is impossible to please God without what? Faith. Everything takes faith, right? Everything. But one of the reasons why a lot of our faith hasn't been working is because we don't understand that faith works by love. Let me, let's look at the scripture. Go to Galatians real quick. Go to Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, or 5, excuse me. Galatians 5, New Living Translation says this. For we place our faith in Christ Jesus, and there is no benefit of being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important, what is important is faith expressing itself, what? Through love. Faith, in the King James language says, faith works by love. So your faith is not working because you don't have a full revelation that God loves you and you believe him for things out of a genie mentality and not out of the relationship of love. Oh, my God. Everything that I've accomplished in life, millions in real estate, bunches of houses, bunches of beauty supply businesses, car businesses, all the things, all the acres in the land, all of it's not ever been for me to get any glory out of it. It's because I, I, I feel like we have a real tight relationship and I feel like. Lord, why wouldn't you want this for you out of my life? Yeah. That's, that's a love relationship. Lord, why wouldn't you want this? I walked up to a building one time that was $800,000, and I prophesied to the building, knocked on the door of the guy. God didn't tell me to say this, but I walked on the, uh, 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 he, told me this, he told me some of it to say as I was saying it. You know how he says, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you as you go. Yeah. I knocked on the door of the Jewish owner, and I said, my name is, and I said it just like this. I had on, and I was a little thuggy looking. I said, my name is Gerald Anthony Johnson. These buildings that you own, you're going to give them to me. I said, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob wants me to tell you that these buildings are mine, and you figure out how to give them to me. As God is my witness. Schaefer, I believe it was 15550 Schaefer, Detroit, Michigan. I knocked on the door. Now, come to find out, these used to be the, pil- the, the bit, uh, buildings that the Detroit Pistons used to own. I walked up to the building. I said, in the name of Jesus. And, and I said, and he was a Jewish guy, so I know he understood Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, or Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I said, these buildings are mine. You're going to figure out how to give them to me. One year later, I closed on the buildings. And he paid for it. Why? Because of the relationship of love is so tight with the Father. I know that you love me. I know your intentions are good for me. Why wouldn't you want this in my life for you? Because I'm going to tithe a dime out of every dollar for you. So, so me and your relationship is cool. I'm a vacuum for you. You love me. So you're going to do it. Some of us are believing God for spouses, but not really. Because... If you, if you tap into the full revelation of how much he loves you, you kind of will stop believing him for that, knowing that he has it for you already. It's on the other side of how much you love him. Faith works by love. It's like an LED light. Jacob was talking about an LED light before. It's like having an LED light sitting right here. I wish I had one. I, I thought about it, but I didn't uh, execute it. But an LED light has all these different fixtures on the inside of it that lights up, right? So if I had an LED light right here and it was plugged up, it's just an LED light. It's just faith. But when I push the button, tell somebody next to you, push the button, push the button. When I push the button, God's love button, then the LED light works. So your faith right now is just a vehicle. It's just sitting there, but you got to tap into the love and your faith will start working. Put in your comments, tap, tap into it, tap into it. It's like a plumber. you got to be a plumber. Like a plumber, what a plumber does with copper pipes, he, he, he sees that it needs to be some flow, so he taps into it. Hallelujah. Now let me, let me, let me conclude this. Woo. Someone say, Lord, give me a love encounter. What the Lord says, be loved. You got to let it happen to you. Be loved. You know, you can tell when a person thinks that they're enough by the relationship that they're in. It's like you feel that you're not, a, not, a, not enough. That's how I can tell that you're not being loved. 
We got one life in this earth, and you, one person can take your life 20 years into the hole. Unless you go into it knowing that I am the beloved. Come on, prophesy and say, be loved. To the person, be loved, be loved, be loved, be loved. Here's the deal. God's love is so deep. His love is so deep that he loves people that don't even like him. That's crazy. Do you love people that don't like you? I don't know. Do you love people that, I, I, it's hard for me. I, I, I can say I love them with the love of God, but do I really love someone that doesn't like me? God loves people that don't, don't even like him. The reason why is because it's just like when a, when, a, when a mother and a father gets together, they have a child. If they weren't married, a lot of times the mother gets mad at the father and says, get out of my house. You, 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 you broke, you, you, you cheated on me, get out of my house. And then they block them from seeing their children. And sometimes it's vice versa. Well, the father makes an attempt to see the child one year, two years, three years, but he's being blocked from, 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 from seeing the child. Then the child becomes of age. I told you last week about the age of love, Exodus 16. Uh, the child becomes of age, and the father goes to the child and says, I want you. But the child says, I don't even like you. But it doesn't stop the father's love because, because you're mine. And this is the reason why the Lord loves everybody. He loves people who does not like him because we're his. Everything that exists in the earth came from him. And God, there's nothing that you can do right now to make God love you more. If you did 20 spiritual push-ups and five, you burped five times while speaking in tongues, God would not love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make, to make God love you less. Now, you'll pay the consequences for stuff, but there's nothing that you can do to make him love you less. But watch this. There is something that you can do to love God more. Look like people are paying attention now. There's something that you can do, and this is where I'm right now. I love God more today than I did yesterday. And it's reciprocal. It's like he can't love me anymore because he is the fulfillment of love. In other words, this love never ends, but I can love him more. And it's just like in a relationship. How, how do you love the Lord more? Well, how do you love people more? Number one, by being around them and paying attention to them, observing their mannerisms. Just looking at them, beholding. Ask the person next to you, have you seen God today? You got to notice God every day. Your love. The Bible says, and, and I said this last week, uh, if you spend time in God, your love grows more perfect. You got to see him. I, I love, when I saw the ice all over everything here in Texas, it's like, I love you more. That's so great. I, I, I've never seen that in my life. And I'm from the Midwest. I love you more. I love you. I love you so much more. And when you and, and here's another way to love the Lord. There's a guy. Uh, his name is Gary. I believe his name is Gary Armstrong or something. He wrote the book called The Five Love Languages. Anybody ever heard that before? The Five Love Languages. Did you know that you can love the Lord more by observing him? But did you know that here's how the love languages work? The theory is, is this. he's an anthropologist and he's a theologian. The theory is, is this. Uh, if you want to know how to properly love someone, then you must discover how they give love. Yeah. The way that they give love is the way that they receive love. Right. And if you're giving them love from the way that you think love is, their tank's going to be half full. Yeah. Their cup's going to be half full, right? So you have to love people the way that they receive love best. And you can tell how they receive love best by the way that they give love, and watch this, by what they complain about a lot. <clears throat> you can tell how people want to be loved by how much they complain. But I don't think that Gary thought about this. God has love languages. The five love languages are these. Number one, acts of service. Number two, quality time. Number three, gifts. Uh, number four, physical touch. And I forgot number five. Number five is words of affirmation. You want your love for the Lord to grow? Start giving him, feeding into his love languages. Gifts. When you, when you bring a gift to him. A gift is always connected to your heart. So every time you give, you, you, you can show the Lord how much you love him. Yes. Last year, uh, I, my biggest gift when I was just coming up was probably $100. But then, but then it moved into uh, $10,000. Yes. 
Why? And I wasn't a pastor or anything, but it's just, I just love you so much that this stuff means nothing to me. And when I gave to him, I can feel the love come back on me. And many people have come to me and given me $10,000 for no reason. Number two, time spent. See, see, unless you're spending time with someone, you'll never fully know them. And how do we spend time with the Lord? In prayer, walking in the spirit, increasing our love for him. Number three, what, what's, one the, what's one that I need? Did somebody tell me one? Acts of service. When you go out and you witness to people in his name. And in the month of March, we're going to get our marching orders. That's the message for the entire month of March. We're going to be going, we're going to be talking to souls, telling somebody about somebody who can save anybody. Going to people and saying, listen, I don't know how to explain this to you, but I'm in love. And I'm in love with someone I can't see. Would you like to know about this love? You want to be in love too? Go to somebody on Valentine's Day and say, I'm I'm in love and I don't even have a date. (laughs) Do do you want to be in love too? (laughs) You know? Give me another one. Give me another one. Physical touch. touch. How do you touch the Lord physically? How do you touch him physically? Jesus had to ask a question one time when there was a lady with with an issue of blood. The Bible says that it was a bunch of people around him and she ran up behind him and touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? Now, all those other people were touching on him and all around him. But she touched him with her heart and she touched him with her faith. And the Bible says immediately everything that was going on in her heart, everything that was going on in her body dried up and she was completely healed. But the last way and one of my favorite ways uh, to love on the Lord is words of affirmation. It's to speak well of him. It's to eulogize. The word eulogize means to speak well of. It is to say how precious he is and to tell him continually. And the thing about it, there are some people that are out of court. They like to come in and dance around and celebrate. That's cool. There are some people that are inner court, though. They like to just lavish the Lord and lay around. But then there are some people that's holy place. That means that all day, every day, 24 hours, they're worshiping him and magnifying him. When they're on their job, they're worshiping. And I don't know if there's anybody watching or anybody here that wants to give the Lord uh, what he loves the most uh, words of affirmation to talk to him and tell him how beautiful he is but why don't you lift your hands and say Lord I love you so much Lord I appreciate you Lord you're so good when I was down to my last dime you stepped in right on time when I wanted to kill myself you said live when I wanted to give up on everything you gave me encouragement when I couldn't feel you when I was in sin you came through and loved on me deeper when my family turned against me and my friends turned against me that's when the Lord stepped up God I love you so much come on give him words of affirmation right now Affirm God. That's the one thing that the Lord. Woo, something is happening right now. So, something is happening right now. Affirm the Lord. Words of affirmation. Oh, we love you. We bless you. We magnify you. We lift you up. Mm. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift up your name. Woo, can you all feel this? Woo. As you are lifting him up, he indicated to me that some of you are about to receive a love encounter, an encounter with the perfected love. It's different. The perfected love is different. And the perfected love will hit you. I felt him today. I felt him last night and today like this. The normal Holy Spirit that I normally feel, there was a spirit inside of the Holy Spirit turning inside of me that was pure love some of you are about to experience the perfected love if you're aware of it oh my God lift your hands right now lift those hands right now it's coming he's coming woo aye my God Father I'm asking you for every heart that's burning for you every heart that wants you every heart that's desperate for you the churchy people Lord I I'm praying for them but your burning ones 
Your burning ones need you so badly. And in this very moment right now, I'm asking that you would give them a radical love encounter with the perfected love. Woo. Yes, yes, yes. Receive that right now. Receive that right now. Receive, receive, receive it, receive it. Receive, 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 receive. There's about to be a shift. Woo! Ah, yeah. Some of your faith is about to work like never before. Come on, stay in the flow, stay in the vein. Jasmine, come up real quick. Sing, sing the, the... The love of God. The overwhelming...
there's somebody there's somebody right now I see you in the realm of the spirit you're crying right now and you are profusely crying and there is a yell in the middle of your belly God is giving you permission right now to go all out I don't care if you have to yell if you have to scream if you have to dance if you have to shout but the love of God is about to encounter you right now. Do not quench the spirit. Release your love to the Lord. And the Lord is releasing his love to you. Release your love to the Lord. The Lord is releasing his love to you. Woo! God is moving upon you in a profound way right now and you know that you're having a love encounter type in the comments I am in love I'm in love you're in it right now Woo! Woo!
some of you today is your last day of therapy. You will no longer need therapy because the Holy Spirit is your therapeutic surgeon. Oh my God. Some of you, you're going to play this over and over again for months and weeks to come. And every time you play this, because it's so pregnant with the love of God, every time you play it, there's going to be a new level of love. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, you may be watching today, and before you turn to this station or before you tuned into this channel or on this page something was pulling you and you you didn't even know why but you couldn't leave and you're watching or maybe a friend invited you to watch and you have never experienced true love the bible says in john 3 16 for god loved the world so much that he gave his only son jesus christ the reason why he gave Jesus Christ is because this world is a place of sin and sin disconnects us from God. Jesus connects us back to God and gives us life. Your life is about to be restored today if you give your heart to Father through Jesus Christ. And when you do that, I'm not promising you that every day will be easy. I'm telling you that he'll be in the fire with you and his intentions for you are always good. If you want to be saved, repeat this after me. Saved means when you transition this life, it means that you're saved from going to a place of torment. That's what saved means. So if you want to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and you want to be saved from torment in the afterlife because of what we do on this, this world, I want you to say this prayer with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you now asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. I apologize for not loving you, for not recognizing you. I totally denounce my old way of living and I give my life to you come into my heart save me make me whole make me new I want to be your child and I want to be loved by you I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior right now amen if you prayed that prayer you are now in the family of God if you're watching this and you're in the Round Rock vicinity the Austin area we want you to come on out to faith culture church and get plugged in to a church home to be discipled and to have community and be surrounded by people who are going to help you in your relationship with the lord but if you're watching somewhere around the country the next thing that i want you to do i want you to find a life-giving church i want you to google spirit filled churches spirit filled church and i want you to find the closest one Go in there and tell somebody that you have given your life to Jesus. God bless you. Now, faith culture, it's time for us to give, to give, to give to the Lord. Let's give a little praise. You may be seated. Uh, you can give to the Lord um, and be a blessing to kingdom work. And you know what? Love is, you know, love is giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. And you see on your screen the ways that you can give myfcc.org you can text to give um, and we appreciate every contribution we're looking at within the next few months uh, God willing in the next few months we're looking at sticking a shovel in the ground and beginning to dig out the earth to start our building process and that's beautiful because we'll have a facility large enough to worship with a bunch of radical worshipers and you'll have all the room to dance around and to celebrate God and, and it's going to be infectious. I believe that like Azusa